Hi, so this is a, a Maggio warm-up B video and we're going to look at um, lesson two as well from the Maggio. Um, I have already put up a video relating to Maggio warm-up A and the relating lesson one after that. Through the whole Maggio system, um, the warm-ups evolve essentially like an, an expansion of I suppose difficulty, but maybe think about that more of intensity and also in, in terms of, um, I suppose, I, 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 how much the trump is going to be in your face, um, the degree of familiarity with the pedal register, comfort of playing down there. And then as you go in through the warm up C and obviously warm up D as well, we look at more of the traditional types of exercises where you have flexibilities as well and some endurance work too. There will be other videos coming along specifically looking at flexibility exercises from Charles Collins and from Max Sloshberg. Uh, some of the Arbin material has already been recorded. It's all out there but for now we're sticking with Maggio warm-up A. It's Sorry, warm-up B. Um, warm-up A is quite straightforward. Must have been in my head. And that's descending major arpeggio and that takes us down into the pedal register so if you're not familiar with that this one sounds like and ultimately that finishes on our pedal C short warm-up break and then the natural progression of things would be that you progress on to lesson one and if you're comfortable with that then it's lesson three and lesson five and they all recommend that you start with warm-up A. So today warm-up B is slightly different. We have a slightly different approach and we're looking more of a, a slurred motion and a, a movement throughout degrees of the range where we have to employ a little bit of tonguing as well. So warm-up B starts in the same place, starts on our C, but instead of doing an arpeggio, we do some descending chromatics, okay? So this is what warm-up B essentially is. Um, I'll go through the whole warm-up and um, I won't make you sit all the way through it but essentially we'll go through the whole thing and then we'll finish up in the same place at our pedal C. So here we go. And of course the PDF um, is available out there but just in case you didn't catch it we go down two chromatics and then we drop down the octave and we do the same so they went C B B flat and then C B B flat down the octave and for me the trick for it or not the trick for it the point of it is to keep the air flowing from that first articulated C even though you've got to drop down the octave to your next articulated C before playing C B B flat again it's one continual stream of air okay so carrying on downwards now There you have it, that's our pedal C right there. Um, I suppose I'm rushing through these a little bit, but the main thing is I would I would normally play them a little bit slower. Um, but providing you're carrying the sound all the way through and you're taking the time to make sure that each of the phrases, the three notes individually, are all nice and clean, and then the two three note phrases, so each of the six notes are all nice and secure then that's all you're really looking for. Warm-up A should have already introduced us to being in the pedal register and what we do with our mouth and being nice and relaxed. There's no extra literature for the start of warm-up B in terms of what the Maggio system says at the beginning of warm-up A. So the information is exactly the same. We'd have to think of our ta type of sound and trying to keep our throat open when we're going down and not forgetting that our support is really, really important in the bottom register as well. I find that if I don't support properly, then I find it's hard to play a pedal C as it is to play a top C. 
So that support is really, really, really important. So from here, we take a five minute break and then we go into Maggio lesson two. Okay, we're at lesson two and we've just done warm up B. At the very, very start of lesson two, um, it says to refer to teaching aid 12. So if you've got the full PDF, this is what it'll say. The tongue has a multiple role in the Maggio system. The tongue creates a syllable. On single attacks followed by a slurred passage, the tongue A rests at the base of the top teeth. So this is like our articulation start when we're doing like a ta sound, I suppose. B drops to release the air to the floor of the mouth and the tip rests at the base of the bottom teeth. So this is, we, we know this already. Most of us who are um, certainly been playing for a good few months, if not a year or so, we're tonguing and our articulation is already formed. But this is quite important when we're thinking about how we address this through our pedal register and our range. It's a good reiteration. And C bends in the middle to form the syllable. So this is a syllable where Maggio refers to the ta, the te, the, the t and the tish sound. So, and then three, when tonguing rapidly, it acts the same as a cobra in striking position, attacking the base of the top teeth. It sounds like quite a mouthful. It doesn't sound like that when you're reading it. So basically when we're going ta, that is really it. I suppose you could think almost as a ta if you're really trying to be like really, really literal about, literal about it. But the main thing is that it's like when we tongue from our teeth, I can't see because of the light in my teeth. So when we tongue, our start to our tongue position, this is the tip of our tongue and this is our top teeth. Tongue f comes away from the top teeth so they've got a clear air passage through here. And this is the back of our tongue. So we're going like ta etc. That's through the range, and if we're going ta 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 ta, it's pretty much what's going on. At least that's what it feels like in my mouth when it's going on. So when we're putting this all together, we have to remember about our air support from our pedal register, etc., all the way into the upper uh, range, wherever we, we may end up, and also to remember that even though we're going to be moving through the range more in lesson two, that we still have the tongue with our correct syllables for that register in mind. Okay, so lesson two, here we go. <laughs> so quite different to lesson one, okay? Instantly, we are moving through two octaves. So our relationship with our tongue and the airstream, already we have to think about applying when we go up to the C and the C sharp and the D at the top, we have to think about applying that transition from the ta or transition to including the T when we're going to the C, the C sharp and the D. This also means that our support is really, really going to have to be in place as well, but it should be in place anyway from our pedal register. So at the start of um, lesson two, called the slurp, he obviously states, um, proceed this lesson with warm up B. And then the next point is our concentrate on plenty of air. We've got a longer passage to play at this stage, certainly until we get to the F sharp change, as we do in lesson one. We don't get a chance for another, another breath. <coughs> um, Keeping the lips together while changing octaves. So if our air is really just moving all the all the way through from the very, very first note when we're descending to coming back up, we shouldn't be doing anything with our embouchure really other than just letting it react to the compression that's being created either by our tongue shape or the support here. And then C, obviously the and the throat. So even though as we start to ascend again beyond the C sharp, up to an E, F, and then throughout all the vowel sound changes, we're still trying to think about keeping our open throat here. That's the main thing. That helps our support mechanism, compression, whatever you want to call it, be connected directly to the back of our embouchure and through the trumpet, etc. Pronounce syllables with the tongue. So 
I, when I first started really getting into this, and I'd never done any lesson two before, I actually went through the process of, of almost singing out the exercise. So, ta, 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 that type of thing there. Okay, it sounds awful. Yeah, I know where I pitch. I can't sing two octaves and pitch down there. So, and then rest as long as you play. So, this is quite an important one. Now, I've been doing loads of chat. And it's going to take forever for me to get through the body of this if I rest for as long as I play. But it is a good idea to do it. You can probably push this exercise a little bit quicker in tempo in terms of what you might do with warm-up A. I quite enjoy taking my time with warm-up A in lesson one. Just because they're longer notes, you can spend a lot of time really, really thinking and being aware of your tongue position. And then F is retain the same embouchure in all registers, which is, is kind of the same in, in what he's saying in point B, keeping the lips together while changing the octaves. We don't really want to do anything. We, we are really trying to learn that our support mechanism here and our tongue position with the syllable that Maggio has provided allows us to push through the register barriers that we might have, our ceilings, whatever it is, it might not even be register, it might just be uh, how fluently and confident you can sit in an area. And this is all going to come with our nice support mechanism, the tongue position on our heads, good relaxed corners here, etc. And also the open throat, okay. So let's move on. We're going to go down to, we'll do a few, okay. And I'll try and maintain the rest periods for a couple at least, okay, so. Sharp didn't want to come out there, so that's where the transition happens again. Where in lesson one, um, when you get to the F sharp area, where normally we'd we'll be pulling away from the pedal area because we'd be sending down just an F sharp, no pedal notes there. That we revert to the downward arrow as you see it in the Magio system PDF, um, which means we do the descending arpeggio C G E C slurred and then two tongue C's, and then you ascend upwards as normal. So already, by going to this F sharp, where we are now, we've transitioned to the lower pedal note again, we're up into G sharps. And at this stage in lesson one, we would still be down in an F sharp, in the middle of our stave, essentially. So this is why making sure that everything is in place here, 
is really going to tie everything together because we're moving through the syllables really, really quite quickly. So what we'll do now is we'll jump ahead a little bit and we'll move into the upper area where we're getting towards the T-I-C-H. So for all of us in Scotland, that's Tish. For all of the rest of you out there, I think it's Titch. I'm not entirely sure. Anyway. So we'll do a few. Let's think. We'll do B flat, B and C, and then we'll look at moving into the upper register beyond there. So here we go. into the higher register now that's our top C there and certainly from the middle set of the three notes compression is fully fully supporting or rather <laughs> the support is fully fully in place for the compression to move through but making sure that our embouchure is still in place from the pedal C all the way to our top C so we're covering three octaves now we're making sure that the air is constant. Yeah, we take a breath after the pedal note. We take a breath in through the nose so we don't disturb the embouchure and then we can carry through and we can make sure that all of that air is going where it's supposed to be, right through the mouth, right through the embouchure. So moving up into the extreme register, want to call it. We're using less air now. So this is where I'll actually start to dial this tempo or the speed that we're going through the higher part of the exercise just so that I can make sure that I'm doing everything correct in terms of support. What I don't do is obviously try and break up the flow of notes or the flow of air, the flow of sound. We're still taking a breath again after the lower descending pedal C arpeggio with the reiterated C's. But making sure that everything is in place as I ascend the tongue position. And you notice like I'm actually trying to think about not holding the trumpet too tight. Really, really trying to just think about let all this steer. Now I'm going to add a wee disclaimer in here. I've already done quite a bit of playing today. I'm not going to try and go super high or whatever. But we'll go maybe and start at um, an E. Okay. And we'll aim for our G. Maybe our G sharper, etc. But when we're above that area where our second TICH or tsh is in place. I want to make sure we're not blowing too hard. One of the things that Maggio keeps keeps saying is is like there's a little quote in here uh, somewhere in the, the the study that says it's a baby but it'll grow and he's talking about the sound. So if you can get these tiny little whistly notes to come out um and you can hold them but they're still notes, you know, and we're blowing air through the instrument. We are learning, our body and our mind is learning where our tongue position is. And we're learning how hard to blow here. It's like, if I was to just like knock out a top G, I would actually try and play it more than like literally hit it with a sledgehammer or a baseball bat or something. Because that's really hard to do. That gives our embouchure a lot to do. You've got a lot of force chucked in there. The start of these notes, when we are compressing, you're super aggressive going, oh, I'm going to play high note. It's like your chops don't really want to deal with that. If you think about walking up to a, a lovely grand piano or something and hitting that top note and just going, bing, that's all you want to do. The sound's going to carry, you know? And that's what we really, really need to take away from these lessons. They're not about 
hammering the notes out. They're about playing in this register, almost like you're trying to turn a B-flat trumpet into a piccolo trumpet. So, I've talked loads, the chops have cooled down. We'll see how this goes. <coughs> so we're going for, uh, we're going to go up to an E on uh, lesson two, and we'll go up towards a G, okay? So here we go. <laughs> So, jobs are starting to get a little bit all dried out. Right then, so that was up to our, um, our G sharp. And the main thing that I was hoping would come across is that even though I'm playing those upper phrases slower, the, the, act of, the actual interval leap of an octave between each of the phrases is instantaneous. And that's a really, really important thing to try and nail. If you're a lead player or you're playing anything whatsoever, in fact, getting our intervals really, really locked in is one of the most important things. I'm sure many of us have gone to play an octave thing or a strange funky interval. Um, and the pitching of it, you think may be okay, but if we've not learned the pitch here, then the chances are, well, let's say we've got a 50-50 chance of hitting it. So I would much rather actually have... Even a 60-40 chance. So making sure that we're taking our time to practice these intervals as well with um, lesson two is really, really good. So take your time over this as long as you want. So that's the end of the lesson. I've got a little bit of editing to do because I misremembered some of these things, but I'll not tell you that. I'll be in the outtakes. But other than that, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, the warm-up A and lesson one are already up. There's a lot more content in the first section of the module that I will get done. There's lesson three, four, and five. They're all fantastic by themselves. One of the things, if you are going to start getting into warm-up B, is um, the module system recommends that you rotate it. So one day you'll do warm-up A, and the next day you'll do warm-up B with accompanying studies that go with them. Um, okay, dokie, folks. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. 
and a little bit more playing in it. Um, if you have any comments, you think I've missed something, you want to want me to clarify something, just fire away, open to it all. Um, really enjoy reading your comments as well. So please like the channel, tell your friends about the videos and the channels, like the video, hit the bell icon, all that type of stuff. And yeah, hopefully we'll see you in a gig soon. Get out there, practice, research, enjoy your trumpet playing and listen to music as well. Okay, folks, bye-bye.